Hello, everyone. A little while ago, there was a Humble Bundle going on that included Game Maker Studio, as well as a bunch of games and source code from professional developers. I've always had a passing interest in developing games and learning how to code, but I never really had a good excuse to uh, jump into it and give it a try. But this bundle caught my attention, and uh, I ended up grabbing it. I think the full bundle was around $15. And unfortunately, it's not um, going on anymore. But uh, I've been having a pretty good time learning how to use the software. So I thought today we would just um, quickly throw together a project here together and uh, see what we can do. I've only just begun to get the basics down. So um, don't take anything I say here today as, you know, professional advice or anything like that. In fact, I welcome your criticism if you feel I could do something better, or if I'm doing something wrong, you know, go ahead and leave a comment, let me know. I'd, I'd love to learn and grow. So uh, for our project here today, I think we're just going to put together a simple Pong game. I mean, everybody knows Pong. It's the uh, most basic of basic video games, right? So let's call our project um, HG Pong. And uh, get right into the user interface. Okay, so this is what you'll be looking at as soon as you launch Game Maker for the first time. Now, the Humble Bundle is no longer for offer, but I do believe there is a free version of Game Maker if you just want to grab it to uh, give it a try for yourself over at the Game Maker uh, website. So yeah, I'm here at the uh, Yo-Yo Games website right here, and they do offer a free version, although it's fairly limited. You can just uh, download it for free, just to uh, give it a try for yourself. I'm not really sure which version is included in the Humble Bundle. I mean, it's just listed as a professional edition, but um, I guess there's um, a master collection on top of that for a ridiculous price of $800. So I believe I'm working with the uh, Studio Professional version, which was included with the Humble Bundle. Okay, okay, back to the game. (laughs) What were we doing? We were making Pong. Um... So what does Pong consist of? It consists of two paddles, a ball, and uh, maybe some walls for the uh, ball to bounce off of, right? So let's start by creating our um, art assets, otherwise known as uh, sprites. Let's start with the uh, player paddle. Let's call this uh, SPR player. And let's create a little uh, paddle for the player, maybe um, 64 by 64. And what we'll do with this is just uh, pick a color, maybe like a bright green. And we'll, well, that's a little bit thin for a paddle, maybe a thicker, uh, something like that. Or maybe that's a little thick. Uh, How about this? Maybe this would make for a better paddle. Let's uh, go ahead and save that. And for collision checking, we can uh, just keep it as a rectangle, I think. And make sure the uh, center is actually the center of the sprite by uh, centering it here. Next, we'll make a sprite for the, um, I don't know, let's let's try and make a bot. We'll, we'll make a bot paddle. I could probably make this a like second player or something, but I'm just here by myself. So maybe we can make a bot uh, play against us. And we'll do the same thing, make a, a 64 by 64 little PNG here and draw another line. I don't think it really matters where you draw it, if you draw it back here or if you draw it draw it up here because the, the center point is all that really matters and that's just uh, figured out automatically. So center that onto the... Um... Oh, actually, I don't think it is centered automatically. It's just selecting the uh, center of the actual square. So maybe it does matter a little bit. Okay, I'm going to erase this and um, (laughs) I don't know, maybe try and get it as center as possible. Okay, that looks a little more center. I'm going to go ahead and uh, correct the the player paddle as well. It's got to be an easier way to uh, draw lines perfectly center. Okay, so we have our two paddles. Now let's make a ball. I think 32 is just fine. And I think we'll use the uh, the shape tool and just maybe make it red. It's got to be an easier way to do this. All right, that's just about close enough to center. 
I think. And make sure this has, um, maybe use an ellipse as the bounding box. Make sure that's centered. All right, we also need some sprites for our walls. And for this, I'm just going to um, pick a color. I don't know, maybe a white color. Oh, no, we're still on the uh, elliptical tool. Here we go. I think we'll make the background black and uh, the walls will be white. I don't really need to center these since I want to fix them to a grid. Okay, I think we have all the art assets that we need now. Now what we need to do is associate those with objects. And objects are where you actually store all of your code that's uh, attached to the individual art assets. So each of these are, are gonna need an object. Let's start with the player. So let's call these OBJ player and associate that with the player sprite. Click okay. OBJ bot. That's gonna be the bot sprite. OBJ ball. Oops, I didn't uh, put that with the... Let's put the uh, sprite on that one for the ball. And OBJ wall. And that'll be the white blocks. However, I think the wall objects actually need to be ticked as solid, unlike the uh, player objects. Not exactly sure why, but uh, it, it's just recommended in the tutorials that I've seen to mark walls as uh, solid objects. Okay, now that we have all our art assets and they're associated with objects, we can create a room to uh, contain everything and uh, arrange it as we want. So this is the default room. Let's make it a little bit longer, maybe 1,200. And maybe a little bit more narrow, just maybe a solid 700. To me, this looks like a uh, pretty basic uh, Pong arena right here. Another thing I want to change is the speed of the room. I believe this acts as the actual frames per second that the room will run at. And 30 can be a little bit choppy, so I'm actually going to boost this up to 60 frames per second to get much more uh, smoother movement. And uh, let's see, like I said, I do want the background to be a solid black. And now we can start placing our objects. First we have the player paddle. Wow, that's a lot smaller than I thought it'd be. Um, hmm. uh, okay, let's, let's maybe place that here. Then grab the uh, bot paddle. Make sure it's uh, in line with the player paddle. Grab the ball, place that somewhere in the middle. And now we have to place a bunch of these uh, wall objects all the way around the uh, whole arena here. Let's see, I think I think you can hold, uh, is it control or control? Okay, control and shift. Control and shift will let us just kind of paint the walls around. But I do want to make sure delete underlying is uh, checked so I don't make, uh, you know, two blocks that are on top of each other on accident. So let's go ahead and paint, oh shoot, paint these onto the grid. I kind of spilled over there. Delete those with the uh, control shift right click. Now, does this look center, I'm wondering? I think maybe there's a little more space above the green paddle than there is at the bottom of the paddle. So I'm going to actually draw an additional uh, line of blocks here. Okay, that looks pretty much center. And I can use this extra space up here to uh, place things like um, score readouts or maybe a timer in the middle or something like that. Okay, so everything seems to be in its place. I think the ball is a little bit off center too. Maybe there's a little uh, little more middle. All right, so I'm gonna close this out with the green check mark. And um, now if we press the play button, all we're gonna see is our uh, room here. But so far we don't have any kind of functionality or any kind of coding on any of these objects, but we can see the uh, general layout of what it's gonna look like. So let's start off by giving the player some uh, movement here. In order to do this, we'll use the uh, keyboard command. Maybe let's assign it the uh, W and S keys for uh, up and down, similar to what you would see on like a uh, first person shooter. And S. So the, 
these uh this is basically saying um if the s key is pressed and then the actions are do this or if the w key is pressed then uh, do this so we can come in here and just drop in some code and you know start uh typing whatever we want the uh thing to do but uh game maker also includes a drag and drop system which can sometimes save you a little bit more time when you're just trying to do simple things like make things move. Um, like the S key should be moving the paddle down, so we can maybe drag one of these uh, move fixed and uh, set it to the down position and assign it a speed, speed of uh, maybe 10. And then do the same thing for the W key, but uh, set the direction to up. Now. We can quickly run the, the program just to see how that behaves. Uh, okay, so it, it's moving up and down, but it's not stopping the movement when I release my finger off the key. And it's also moving off the screen, up past the uh, walls and everything. So, so we can quickly fix that by just uh, adding a, a collision event with the wall. And let's say, let's tell it to stop when the, uh, when the paddle collides with the wall. Now for the, for the movement, maybe, maybe move is not the right, uh, function we're looking for here. Maybe jump to position could be better. And, uh, let's see, it's going to jump. It's going to do this every frame that the S key is pressed. So if we simply put, uh, let's see, the S key is down. So if we put a positive value in on uh, on the X here, it should positively move the paddle in a downward motion. And I think if we check relative, it'll just... Well, let's not check relative. Let's see what happens with this. Um, hmm. Okay, it's not doing anything. But uh, the collision with the wall is working as it should. Uh, maybe relative does need to be checked. Oh God. Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> wow, that, that was a dumb mistake. Uh, the x-axis is actually the uh, horizontal movement. What we want to do is add um, 10 to the y movement. And I, I think we can just maybe say plus 10 instead of just 10. And then maybe we don't need the relative. I don't, I'm not sure exactly uh, what each of these uh, things are doing. Okay, I got an error there. I'm not really sure what went wrong, but maybe it was the uh, addition of 10. Wait, is it because I didn't put a zero here? Hold on. I think it's just because I left the X blank. <laughs> I didn't realize that uh, the it can be so finicky. I, I think that was the problem. I'm 80% sure here. Okay, so it, it, it does need to be relative. Plus 10 is not going to do it. Just make it relative. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to work, so I'm just going to assign the same thing to the uh, to the W key. Except this time it's going to be a negative 10 value on the Y. Okay. Alright, basic stuff here. Okay, now the paddle is moving and it's uh, stopping once I let go of the key. And it's colliding with both the walls as it should be. Okay, so now let's um let's add some some movement to the uh, ball here. So we can just say when this uh, when this thing is created at the beginning of the game when it launches, let's just have it move in a uh, random direction, either left or right. And the speed, um, okay, maybe twenty. Let's try that. So now when I launch this, the ball should just move either left or right at uh, random. Okay, it just shot off the screen there. It does need to uh, collide with uh, the paddle, so let's add collision with the player paddle. And just tell that to bounce off uh, precisely. The paddle is not solid, so let's switch this to all objects instead of solid. Add another collision event for the bot. Make that bounce off precisely with all objects. And we also need collision with the wall objects. And uh, let's, and that is solid, so let's just leave that like that. I think the movement was a little bit fast, so let's make that half of what it was. 10 should be good. Okay, so we have 
some resemblance of Pong going on here. I can move. However, the paddle doesn't really... Okay, well, I guess it does deflect off the paddle. If I get it, like, right on the corner. And that was a weird glitch right there. And it just uh, disappears off the screen. Um, I don't like that the ball just vanishes off the screen. Okay, just for the sake of testing, I'm going to add a, a keystroke in here. Let's add the letter R here. And for this, I'm going to throw in a piece of code here just to uh, reset the game. So let's just say uh, room reset. Restart? Okay. Room restart. So whenever I press the key R, it should just reboot the whole game. So uh, everything is back to scratch. I can use this for just uh, testing purposes. So if I ever lose the ball, I can just uh, bring it right back into the game. So let's add some uh, AI to this paddle here. Oh, um, let's see. Let's make a step event. This is going to happen every frame of the game. So how are we going to make the bot track the position of the ball? So the bot only needs to move on the y-axis up and down. So we could say if the uh, obj ball dot y referencing the y position of the ball is um uh, let's see let's see if it's greater than the uh let's see i have to think about this on the fly here let's reference the bots uh y axis so if the ball is in this instance lower than the bats y or the bots y it will do this uh let's see um what will it do it will increase the the y value y increment the y value by one or maybe four then maybe maybe we can do another if statement if obj ball dot y is less than obj bot y then we will uh take y away take one take Let's say, uh, subtract, subtract four from, uh, Y. So I believe this will always move the paddle towards the uh, position of the ball in order, to, in order to actually hit the ball. I, I hope, I, I don't know. I could have got the values wrong. So I'm going to hit it. Hey, look at that. Look at that. He's actually tracking the ball. That is brilliant. Okay. And I can always reset the game by pushing R. The thing is, I don't like how... I, I feel like it's too easy to hit the ball straight on. I, I don't have much control over the ball. And, and that, that bot paddle needs to uh, collide with the walls just the same as we do. So, a uh, quick fix here. When it collides with the walls, just tell it to stop moving. Okay. Okay, so we've got our simple bot AI set up. Although it's a little bit slow, we can always speed up the bot's uh, movement towards the ball by changing this value. Maybe something like 7 is uh, more like it. So I'm thinking of a, maybe a quick fix for this um, ball directionality problem we're having with the paddle. We could modify the mask so it's just an ellipse. So basically, basically it'll be calculating the collision with the paddle kind of as a rounded surface here instead of just a straight paddle. And that should give us a lot more control over the uh, actual ball itself. And we can do the same with the, um, the the bots paddle, just making an ellipse. I think this will do what I want it to. That ball is really moving fast. But yeah, now, now I feel like... Oh, well, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> how can you hit the ball backwards? That doesn't seem right. I think there's a little bit more control over the ball this way. Uh, or, or is it just in my head? I don't know. I, I, like, I can hit it low now by hitting it at the bottom portion. Yeah, I think, I think this is fine. This should work just fine for our purposes. Hey, I scored on the, the bot there somehow. Okay, so now what 
what is missing here? So far, we don't have a way to uh, count score, and we don't have a way to reset the ball back to the center for uh, another round. So I'm thinking maybe we need some more kind of sprites here that we can just use as triggers. Let's call this SPR um, left goal and uh, make a sprite here that we can paint on the left side of the screen to trigger a goal. It doesn't really matter what color it is. Actually, maybe it does. Maybe, maybe a nice light blue color would work good here. Okay, and uh, we need another one for the uh, the right goal. So SPR right goal, and uh, whew, I don't know. Maybe make this one a nice uh, purple. I, I mean, we can always make these invisible so you can't even see them if the uh, color is an issue. And then we need to uh, assign objects to these two. Left goal. Make another one, object, right, goal. And then we need to paint these uh, tiles inside the room. So in this instance, I would be painting a left goal right here behind the player where it's uh, too late to be saved. And then paint the uh, other goal over here. Okay, so we have our goals set up. Now we need to, uh, I think we'll do it inside the ball itself. Let's say if you collide with the left goal, first of all, the, the ball has to jump back to its uh, original position. So let's drag up a uh, jump to start code here. But we also want to increment the score. So how can we do that? We'll have to make a uh, score variable. For now, let's just say left score and uh, tell it to increment that by one whenever it collides with the uh, left goal. Wait a second, I got that backwards. It's actually the, uh, the right player who actually scored by uh, touching that goal. Okay, so we'll increment right score by, by one. Okay. But we still need to define these... Um, Maybe we can define the variables in the create event here. So we'll say right score and set that to zero, left score and define that as zero. So at the start of the game, both of the scores will be set to zero and increment from there based on which, which um, goal is scored on. Okay. Okay. I think this should work. Add another event for the right goal and tell this to change a left score increment by one. We also need a way to actually draw the score so we can see it. I don't know if I can do that within the uh, ball object itself. I'm pretty sure if I tell this to draw, it will actually make the ball disappear somehow. I'm not sure. It I've had issues with this in the past. Let's just tell it to draw text, and that's going to be at the X position. Um, let's just say 50, 50. That, that'd be kind of like the uh, top, top left corner, I think. And then we'll write the text left score equals followed by the string. And we'll list the variable here, um, left score. I, I think that works. I don't know. Let, let's see if it even draws anything. It, yeah, I had a feeling I did something wrong there. So it says something's wrong with the uh, draw event here. Oh, I forgot the uh, extra closing uh, parentheses there. Since the uh, variable is actually encapsulated into another uh, parentheses. Okay. Maybe this will do something. I don't know. Maybe it'll crash again. Oh, hey, look at that. We actually have a uh, score up here. But uh, <laughs> kind of like I expected, the ball is now actually gone. Why Why is that? Why is that? Uh, what if instead of a draw event, 
we try using a uh, draw GUI. I I've had luck with this in the past. I don't know if this will uh, actually fix it though. Okay, we got we have a ball. Now, all I have to do is score on the uh, bot here to see if that score actually uh, increments at all. Which might actually be impossible. I think I might have set the uh, bot paddle a little bit too fast. So it could... Hey, hey what are you doing over there? <laughs> the bot found a way to cheat. Okay. Let's restart restart the game. Okay, at least my my side of the goal is actually working as it should. But uh, I need to print the other score on uh, his side of the screen. So we'll copy the same line of code. But instead of a uh, left score, we'll have it say right. And we'll have it print the right uh, score variable and we have to move it over a little bit uh, on the x-axis so instead of 50 maybe we'll make it um, a thousand and I either want to increase the speed of the ball or decrease the speed of the bot paddle I think we'll decrease the speed of the bot Maybe to five. Okay, so we have two sets of scores. And uh, I just saw the right score increments accordingly. Oh, that's beautiful. And if I could only score on this bot that I just uh, apparently programmed so well it's undefeatable. Um... Yeah, I'm going to have to think of something clever to uh, prevent this bot from being so good. First of all, I want to take these objects and uh, make them invisible so I don't have to see this uh, light blue and purple all over the place. And then I'm thinking maybe every time the paddle hits the ball, we can increment the speed of the ball just a little, little bit of a nudge just to keep the challenge up up until the uh, the ball actually makes a goal. Oh, we'll, we'll have to do that inside the uh, ball object itself here. So we have it bounce against uh, the object. Then let's add a, an additional piece of code here that just uh, says um, speed e uh, plus uh, increment by one. So it'll increment the speed of the ball object by one. Every time it uh, it contacts the player paddle. And we'll do the same for the bot paddle. Just like that. And um, this should make the uh, ball increase in speed every time it touches the paddle. But we do need to reset the speed back to its uh, original value, which was 10. Every time it touches the uh, goals. So we're, so we're not... Uh, dealing with a light speed ball here. Actually, let's see what a light speed ball might look like. So I'll just let it bounce and it should be picking up speed. It should be. Okay, good, good. It is actually increasing its speed. It's almost not even apparent. But you see, if, if the ball does happen to make a goal, it's gonna maintain its speed no matter what. So, <laughs> so let's make it so that whenever it uh, actually scores a goal, it uh, resets the speed back to 10. A solid 10, okay. This will make sure that uh, the ball doesn't get out of hand whenever there's a uh, goal made. Okay, okay, so the ball will build up speed over time. I, I want to get it up fast enough to where I can actually perceive that it's fast. And then as soon as a goal is made, it should return back to a slow speed right now. Yeah, that looks like 
That looks like it's back to 10 to me. So the theory is that I'll be batting this back and forth between me and the bot until eventually the speed of the ball becomes so fast that the bot cannot keep track of it. And only then will I be able to score on the bot. Uh, <laughs> well, that was a pretty poor performance. And I don't know where the ball went. It should have reset to the center. It's almost like it passed through the... Uh... Hold on, let me reset this. There might be something wrong here with the, uh, with the bot's side of the, the board here. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, all right, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, kinks to work out on this uh, Pong game that I made here today. But, uh, yeah, what the heck happened there? The score jumped up by 10, and the uh, ball did not reset. Did I? I, I think I, I did something stupid here. Oh, well, I'm missing... I'm missing the whole jump to start position command here. Okay, well that... That solves that. <laughs> uh, apparently the ball is just passing right on through and uh, collecting additional points along the way. All right, anyway, <laughs> this is this is my uh, crappy Pong game. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, whole creative process of uh, putting this thing together just now. If this at all interests you and you feel like maybe um, you might enjoy creating your own games or building your own game from scratch then you know you know be my guest go out and uh, check that uh, free version of game maker out and really you can make anything under the sun with this thing that uh, that i guess is two-dimensional i don't think game maker does much in the 3d department but uh yeah it, it is a great tool for making uh two-dimensional games Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll catch you all later in the next episode.